Hello, my name is Tim Shoebridge. Now, if you've ever owned a Dave Smith synthesizer, certainly one of the sequential range, then no doubt you'll have had the pleasure of playing an arpeggio or a sequence, maybe something like this. And then doing this with it. Sounds nice, doesn't it? That's the pan spread control. Now, I recently discovered that you can do something very, very similar in Eurorack uh, with the help of a very small, humble, and cheap little utility module. So that's what I'm gonna show you in this video. If that's of interest to you, then please watch on. So this small and humble and very reasonably priced module that I'm talking about is actually this one. It's called a sequential switch. This one is made by Dopefer, though there are quite a number of them out there on the market. What I'm going to do in this video is first of all just show you the basics of a sequential switch, what it does, and then show you how you can adapt it to giving you that pan spread functionality. Okay, so let's take a look at this specific module from Dope for the AE151. What I'm gonna talk about is specific to this particular module, but I think that all sequential switches work in a very, very similar way. Um, you'll see that there's just, you know, there's not many patch points on this thing at all. It's very, very simple. I'm just gonna highlight there uh, one of the patch points in yellow. And now the idea with this sequential switch is that that yellow patch point can be connected to any one of the four patch points below it, which I'll just highlight for you in red. Uh, it actually has got numbers one, two, three, and four on the panel itself. But So we've got these four uh, individual um, red patch points, which can be connected to the yellow patch point, but only one at a time. So we can either have uh, number one connected, or number two, or number three, or number four, uh, but not more than one. Now which of those connections is active at any point in time is dependent on a trigger signal that you'll pass into that top patch point called trig in, trigger in. A uh, trigger signal can be, uh, it could be a gate, for example, uh, from a keyboard or from a sequencer. It could be a clock uh, signal. Um, it could be an LFO. Any signal that's really sort of like jumping from zero positively up in voltage is enough to trigger this particular module. Uh, so when you pass a trigger signal into this switch, um, it will create those active connections between the yellow and the red patch points sequentially, and I'll show you what I mean. So it starts off by default being connected to number one. As we receive a trigger, it'll jump to number two, and then to number three, and then to number four. And then on the next subsequent trigger, it'll jump back to number one again, and then go through its cycle, number two, number three, number four. So you can see why it's called a sequential switch, because it's just doing those connections sequentially. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, so let me just explain where I'm coming from with this whole stereo sequence thing that I've got in my head here. I've got my Melodizer sequencer. It's got a single CV and gate output. And when I pass those into this module here, which is rings by Mutable Instruments, I get this beautiful stereo sound. You can hear that the sound is alternating between the left and right channels like there are two synth voices inside of rings and they're panned left and right.
and it's a beautiful sound. Now compare that and contrast that with hooking up Melodizer to a regular set of synth modules uh, that give me a regular monophonic synth voice. Now I know that uh, stereo is not always required, and in fact sometimes it's definitely not wanted, especially when you've got a lot of instruments and you're putting together you know, a, a track using those instruments. You, you don't want them all shouting at you in stereo, you want them in mono, you want to be able to place them in the stereo field how you want to. But when you've got an isolated sound like this, or it's the dominant sound in an otherwise quiet piece of music, then it's really nice to have this stereo capability. So that got me thinking about, well, how could I potentially replicate that rings sort of bouncing stereo effect, but using regular synth voices? And that's where the sequential switch comes in. So we clearly need to take our single gate output from our sequencer and split it somehow between uh, one synth voice and the other synth voice. And that's what we're gonna use the switch for. Um, so the gate signal, as you can see, going into that yellow uh, patch point, uh, and we want to get it out of one and then out of two, back to one, back to two, back to one. Now the way to get it to switch between one and two at exactly the right times, because the gate is not always going to be constant, it's going to be you know long notes, short notes, whatever, is actually to use that exact same gate signal as the trigger input as well. So let me see if I can show you graphically how that works. So we start off with the uh, switch connected to um, that socket number one. So we have the gate coming out of number one. Um, and that's the way it stays until we get another gate signal and as soon as we get a gate signal that acts as a trigger uh, which means the switch is now switched over to uh, number two and the gate comes out of number two and that carries on until we get another gate and as soon as we get another gate the switch is activated switches back to number one and suddenly the gate starts to come out of number one and as you'll see that happens until we get another gate which switches back to number two and then another one switches back to number one so using the gate signal as both um, the input to the switch as well as the trigger to the switch we can get that gate to split out beautifully between those two channels which is all I need for stereo sort of ping pong kind of capability but obviously I could do it up to three or four voices and have some incredibly interesting and varied uh, stereo outputs from a single sequencer using just this one switch. Right so let's get on with the patching of this stereo sequence. You'll see here that I've got two 110 modules. They're kind of ready to go. Uh, they're being modulated each by a separate envelope generator. And now what I need to do is give each of those envelope generators a gate coming from our sequential switch. So let's do that now. So in order to get a single gate output from my sequencer into two of the patch points in this switch module, I'm gonna use one of these cables. It's a splitter cable, malt cable, whatever you wanna call them. Um, it just makes life very, very easy. So I'm gonna go from my sequencer gate output into the first patch point, and then with a little cable, into the trigger in as well. So that's it. Um, and now what we'll find if I start the sequencer, we'll see there by the LEDs that are lighting up that the gate is flicking between um, the first and second outputs, which is exactly what we want. So now all we need to do is take those two as outputs as gates into my envelopes.
And as for the CV coming out of the sequencer, well, we just need to give it to both of the oscillators that we're going to be playing uh, in the two different 110 modules. Uh, it doesn't matter that they both get the same CV because they're going to only be triggered when they receive a gate, so they're not going to be playing the wrong notes unless I have a really long um, release on the envelope. But we'll have to adjust that as we go. But we can get away with just the same CV going to both of the 110s. Sequential switch, stereo sequence, sequential switch, solve stereo sequence. Simple sequential switch S solves stereo sequence situation superbly. <laughs> 